Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Underwater Photography Show. My name is Matthew Sullivan. And I'm Alex Mustard. Uh, and today we're going to go over a little bit about the show itself. Uh, we're going to cover why we're doing it, uh, a little bit about who we are, um, and just kind of a general overview of the show itself. Um, so I'll toss it to you for the first one, Alex. What is the Underwater Photography Show? Well, I, think, I guess in simple terms, it's a discussion show about underwater photography. You could say that it's kind of like a podcast, but based on YouTube, I think it's easier to find on YouTube. Unfortunately, you have to suffer looking at our faces, <laughs> but you are allowed to listen to it with your phone facing the other way. Actually, I quite often like, you know, check through the content we put out there in the car, actually, where I can't see the screen of the phone, but I can play the audio um, through the, the sound system. So I don't have to look at myself um, while listening to the show. Um, we, we want the show, I guess, to be very wide ranging. I know there's loads of things that you want to talk about, Matt, and there's lots I want to cover as well. So we want to take on everything we can in underwater photography. But the format is about being easy listening, a, a chat. It's not formal teaching where you have to concentrate on every point we're making every you know it's we're going to chat we're going to talk about underwater photography something i know we both love and during that hopefully you have a fun time listening and you learn something along the way i think we see i um, think you said in our sort of ch um, channel introduction for the youtube the little short one you said it's it's an informal show but informative at the same time and i hope that means that people do learn a lot from it yeah, I think just by us having conversations and just and you know, like you said, we both love it. We'll be able to talk about this. We could talk about it forever. Um, I think people will just pick things up on the way, whether we're meaning to teach them or not. Um, so, yeah, hopefully people get a lot out of this and and enjoy it at the same time, whether they have to look at us or not. Um, <laughs> but we'll, see. we'll see what kind of feedback we get on that. Yeah, we'll find some, yeah I, I think I know what feedback we'll get. It's like, can you just show us the pictures of the dogs? We yeah, know your voice yeah, exactly. is going. Yeah, that's how it's going to go. Um, I think as well, one of the things I like about this is because we can talk about some very specific subjects, often things come up both in conversation, but also by taking on those specific subjects, like anything from greasing O-rings to washing housings. Bits of advice that you'd never think to write in an article, write in a book, mm -hmm. actually come out of these conversations. And people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, need, I need to start doing that. So, And things I would never think to tell someone as good advice actually can be very useful. Um, I'd say that we're aiming the show at enthusiastic photographers. It's for those who, who already do it. We're not going to be like, this is how you take your first underwater photo too much. It's aimed at, at kind of the community of people we know. I know, I believe, and I, I know you do as well, that you know, very strongly that we are a community of underwater photographers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that but I, I do think beginners can listen to this as well and probably get a lot out of it. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, so, I, I'm yeah. just saying, you know, it's kind yeah. of it's to watch once you've got a camera. not before Yes, for sure. For sure. Um, all right. So we've covered a little bit about what the show is. Uh, how about we start talking about why we're actually doing it? Well, I, I, the quick answer to that question, which is, kind of makes me laugh, is, is that if we weren't doing this on recording, We'd be doing this to each other and our friends anyway. So <laughs> why not record these conversations? Because we, we definitely both love talking about all aspects of underwater photography. Um, the gear, the locations, the techniques, you know, all that stuff. You know, there's a lot of you know, a lot of things happening on the gear front at the moment. So there's really a lot to talk about. And, you know, one of the, the, the things that you know I like is that we're both shooting, you know, with different gear. And that means that, you know, there's a lot to learn from each other as well. Yeah, and one of the it was fortuitous that this all came about when it did because I'd actually been thinking recently, uh, and I'm sure it's a fraction of what you get, but I get a lot of questions from people about all sorts of various topics, um, and I have never had figured out the right way to go about sharing that in a, on a larger scale. So that it, so I think this is going to be really beneficial for people um, if they ask a bunch of questions. I can be like, hey, go watch you know the Underwater Photography Show, and you can listen to us. You don't have to watch us. You can listen to us <laughs> laugh about whatever the topic is for however long and uh, potentially get something out of it. Plus something that, you know, like you said, when you're just having conversation, you might be more inclined to throw some things in there that you wouldn't necessarily, if you're writing a review or an article or you're just, you know, texting somebody something. <laughs> you mean say things you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I didn't mean to say that. I'm being too honest. Um, yes. Uh, uh, I, I think as well, you know, one of the nice things with YouTube as well is the, these videos last forever. And yeah. um, underneath each video, you can add comments. 
And I get a ping in my email inbox each comment someone adds. And so if you've got ideas for things you want us to talk about, mm. put them there because it's a great, you know, if, or you just got a question, you know, ask a technical question, ask a technique question, ask a gear question, you know, and that will probably make a great episode for us. So please get in the comments under this video or any video and we'll f add those to our list of, of topics to cover. Yep. And that's a great, you know, so if you've got questions, you know, bother us by email and messenger, but also, you know, comment under these videos and we'll, you know, that's a great way for us to answer the video. And the same with any of the topics we're talking about. One of the things I like about the YouTube format is that if we make some points and you think, oh yeah, but there's something else you could say on top of that, that's also what the comments are for yeah. because most people watching the video will probably have a look through the comments and, you know, something you say might really help them. So yeah, you know, to everyone watching, you know, we kind of feel the underwater photography show is a community thing. Um, yeah. The other reason I kind of want to address as to why I'm doing this is, as most people probably who are watching this probably know, for the last three years or so, I was doing a discussion chat thing on underwater photography called Wet Pixel Live here on YouTube. And many, many photographers who I never met sent me messages to say how much they loved it, how much they got out of those episodes, how much knowledge they, they, they imparted. You know, look, people do want to learn with formal teaching, but they also want to learn in this more relaxed, chatty format where it's not just about the, the lessons. And as you know, um, you know, I, I did Wet Pixel Live with, with my friend Adam Hanlon, who has is been well recorded now in, in, in you know, turned out to be not such a good friend and um I think has and has disappeared from the underwater community as a result. The the wet pixel forum community has moved to a, a new space called waterpixels.net and it was sad to see wet pixel live die as a result of that so i think what we're trying to do with this is is to take what was good about wet pixel live the lessons we learned tweak a few things improve a few things and and bring that same sort of content back to youtube with the underwater photography show for sure mm. um on a on a more positive yeah more sorry positive, yeah <laughs> let's uh most people watching this already know who you are but why don't you give them a little bit of an intro to you? For the people who don't know, uh, why don't you give them a little bit of an intro as to who, who you are? Okay, my name is, is Alex Mustard. I'm an underwater photographer. Um, a long time ago, I used to be a marine biologist when I was called Dr. Alexander Mustard. <laughs> and um, I guess that still influences a huge amount. I often say, you know, you can, um, you know, you can stop being a marine biologist um, for your job, but you can never stop being a marine biologist in your heart. And it definitely impacts my way of shooting. I know lots of people know my, my work, so I, I thought I'd look up some different facts um, about me, which I didn't know. Um, and so I found some numbers and I've written them down on a piece of paper and I'm now gonna try and remember what the numbers relate to. <laughs> so the first number I've got on here is 5,312. And that's the number of dives that I've done in my life with a camera. I only log the dives I've done with a camera, but I still keep a, a dive log. So. 5,312 scuba dives with the camera. Like you, I also enjoy free diving with my camera. Um, the next number I've got on here is 277. Um, and I've written hundreds and hundreds of articles on underwater photography for Underwater Photography Magazine, for Wet Pixel, for Dive Photo Guide, for loads and loads of magazines. And I've written lots of articles about diving and travel. But 277 is the number of monthly magazine columns that I've written for magazines about underwater photography. And if you add those all end to end, I think it's something like 25 years or something or 23 years. Of, um, I haven't been writing them for 23 years. I think I, I did my first column about 18 years ago, but for some of that period, I've been writing more than one a month and at sometimes not writing them at all. So 277 magazine columns and counting on underwater photography. The next number I've got on here is 131. And that is the number of underwater photography workshops that I've run. Um, and those are week workshops for groups of photographers. And I think people often, you know, you know, say yeah, underwater photography, you can't earn a living doing an underwater photography. It's a difficult place to earn money. And maybe what those last two numbers show you is the kind of solution to earning that money is you just have to do lots of work. You know, you don't just do one or two workshops and that's you sorted for the year. You know, it's lots of workshops, lots of articles, all the time while you're doing these things um, to make these, these these things work together. Um, the next number I've got 
is um, is a thousand, and it's a bit of more of a rough number. I didn't actually um, look that one up, but the a thousand is the number of pictures, pretty much that I've sold this year. I, I gave a talk to a group of um, PH, science PhD students a month ago, and I, I counted up the number of pictures I'd sold um, this this in during 2023 through mainly through Stock Agent, but also a bit myself. And I sell about a thousand pictures a year, and I think that's another number that people don't appreciate. You know, they don't necessarily see that many of them. I don't post on social media every time a picture's published. I, you know, everyone would be bored to death by it. Um, but it's, um, you know, and I think that's the other way you make ends meet. Some of those pictures are selling for, you know, a buck or, or less. Some of those are only good money. Um, and, you know, and it's not the place to talk about money, but, you know, those things do work. And then the final number is is 39, which is the number of years that I've been an underwater photographer for. I'm I'm 48 at the moment, and I started when I was nine years old. So 39 years behind a camera, and still going strong. So that's my life in numbers. I did <laughs> I, I I did know the 39 one, but all the others I had to look them up. So 39 is a good run. You'll double that. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, actually, Matt, before you get going, I'm going to ask you. Um, lots of people know you from your social media handle of formerly homeless photographer. And I don't know the answer to this. Where's that come from? <laughs> so it's funny. It's funny now because it will seem in, like in general society, when you meet somebody, they don't necessarily know you by your name, but if you have a unique Instagram handle, you can be like, Oh, I'm Matt. And they're like, oh, okay. And then you're like, oh, formerly homeless photographer. And they're like, Oh, formerly homeless. So I meet a lot of people on dive boats or randomly that way, which is, which is interesting. But um, I moved to California in 2017 for a job. And California is a very expensive place to live, especially in Los Angeles where I was. Um, so my option was I can afford a place to live and be able to have no money for anything else, or I can live out of my car um, and get to travel a little bit. So I opted for the latter. Uh, and for two years, I lived out of the front seat of my car. Uh, it there were many times where it sucked, like in the summers when every day is 120 wow. degrees and it doesn't get below 90. Um, but it allowed me to go to some places that I still have not made it back to otherwise. Um, I got to do my first trip to God's Pocket. I have returned there. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Um, got to go to Lembe, got to go to Guadalupe, got to go to Alaska. Um, and some of those places I haven't been able to return to just because mm. I had the money at the time and the time and now I, now I don't. Um, but that's where it came about was two years living out of my car in in uh, California. And then it was so it was very sweet. Hey, not was, just because of the L.A. traffic then. <laughs> no, which is <laughs> worse than everybody says. It's brutal. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, no point having a house because you spend so long in the queues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I there I vividly remember one time I timed the drive between work and the rock climbing gym that I went to. And it was less than two miles. And it took me an hour and 36 minutes to get there one day just because you it would have been faster to walk. But, at the, you know, at the time I was bringing all my all my stuff with me. So I just went to the I, just, I drove and it took forever. Um, so if anybody's thinking of visiting L.A., the traffic is worse than you think. It's <laughs> going to be, so plan for it. Yeah. Um, Don't get but, a hotel room. Just rent a car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, with regards to who kind of who I am, uh, most people know me now from working with Dive Photo Guide. So I'm the photo editor there. So I'm responsible for the vast majority of all the content that goes up on DPG. Um, either I'm doing it myself or I'm responsible for gathering it from, from others. Um, so if anybody watching this has any cool ideas for articles or you want to have something published on there, please let me know. Uh, ooh, I'm ooh, ooh, ooh. There's a new show about underwater photography oh. starting on YouTube. <laughs> That might would be a great to, article. Might have to make a post about that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's my main gig uh, at this point. And then I also work um, work for slash with uh, Kraken Sports. Um, so I do a lot of their gear gear testing to make sure everything works. Um, I am a rep for them in, in Florida. Uh, and um, those are my two main things right now. I used to I also used to work on a shark boat, so I have lots of experience you know, feeding sharks as well, which was a fun job. Um, 
and that's kind of where I'm at right now. But uh, I think you should definitely think, not place suggest it, really, but you should definitely um, like consider doing some teaching. So I think the like the the knowledge you have, the insight you have into the gear, I think people would really really appreciate that. You know, you, know, you have a very clear. I, I really enjoy reading your articles on DPG. It's one of the reasons why we've ended up together doing this. And I've always felt you've had a, a properly clear and you've got a very clear way of explaining things and a clearly a deep understanding of, 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 of what you're talking about. And you see it in your, in your pictures, which I, you know, I've always loved, but, and I think that a lot of people would, would really enjoy getting that experience from you because, you know, there's lots of people who can take nice pictures and there are lots of people who, you know, are good at imparting knowledge and teaching, but there are not so many who have both those skills. So, I think it would be yeah. You should something you should you know definitely start thinking about doing is you know because you also learn. I, I found anyway, the more I taught, the better I got at it. You know, yeah. so kind of you know it's it's not just like right. I'm ready to teach now. Let's run a big workshop. It's actually yeah. you know you start up and you you can do some good stuff. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, is there anything else you would like to cover with regards to the show? No, other than you know what we we're not going to say very often, which is you know please like our videos, please subscribe to the channel. We kind of plan to get a video out about once a week. Obviously, we're both underwater photographers, so we're not always at home and able to record, but we'll try to kind of maybe, you know, record a couple, have a couple to, to tide us over travel periods. So hopefully there'll be kind of a video a week. Um, if something exciting is happening, you might get a few a bit quicker than that. And if we're busy, you might not get a few for a little while, but kind of about once a week, hopefully. I think that's good. All right. That seems like a good place to wrap up. Thank you, Alex. Uh, and we'll see everybody in the next episode.